I think a good place to start would be the the pro aging trance because I was having a little bit of difficulty understanding it for myself and like I said that could have been because I was under a bit of that trance myself I'd never heard aging explained in that sort of way before that you had explained the the pro aging trance and then I heard you tell the story of seeing a hypnotist at Cambridge that made it all click for me and I think it would be great for listeners if you wouldn't mind retelling what happened at Cambridge what you saw and how that relates to pro aging the pro aging trance Sure, yes. Um, so let me tell the story not quite chronologically. I think it will make more sense that way. So um, let me start out by how I was before Cambridge. Uh, in fact, from my earliest days, the thing is, I had always, it had always been completely obvious to me that aging is a medical problem that we have the potential eventually to solve. In other words, that in principle, medicine can be developed that will keep people truly youthful, both mentally and physically, however long ago they were born. This simply followed, in my view, from the obvious fact that the human body is a machine that uh, therefore has a set of functions that are defined by its structure, and medicine is all about uh, manipulating that structure. Um, and what I didn't do, what I never realized, was that this was a minority opinion back then that, um, you know, most people didn't think of aging that way and had some kind of mystical idea that it was some kind of thing outside of um, any, anything that medicine could ever manipulate. And when I um, started working in this field and talking to people about the um, importance of this and the feasibility of doing something about aging, um, I was just completely blown away by the reactions that I would get people saying the most obviously ridiculous things and, you know, absurdly illogical arguments saying either that aging is some kind of blessing in disguise or else that aging is somehow completely natural and inevitable and universal and immutable. Um, and, uh, you know, I just heard this over and over again and it began to dawn on me that I had had one prior experience um, which very much resembled this. Uh, and that was this uh, hypnosis show that you're describing here. So this was in my first year as an undergrad at Cambridge, so probably 1982 or 83. And I uh, went to this show, <clears throat> very good show, uh, maybe a few hundred undergraduates were the audience. And um, one of the things that the hypnotist did was to explore logic. So what he did was he basically... Uh, got somebody on stage and put them into a very deep trance. And then he told them, he con convinced them to believe something that's not true. Uh, the particular thing was he switched the, switched the subject's elbows. So he said, okay, you know, this is actually your right elbow and this is your left elbow. And um, he didn't explore the ramifications of this at all. He just got the person to completely, absolutely, uncritically believe this thing, which is what you can do if you're um, hypnotized, if mm -hmm. someone's hypnotized. Um, and then um, he said, OK, please touch your right elbow with your left forefinger. Um, and of course, there was lots of wriggling and writhing and, um, you know, um, failure to do this. And that was funny, obviously. Uh, but that was not the main um, aspect of this little segment of the show. That was funny enough. But then the interesting thing happened. Um, so the hypnotist says, OK, uh, you can stop now. And the guy stops. And then the hypnotist says, you couldn't do it, could you? And the guy says, no. And then the hypnotist says to the subject, why not? Why couldn't you do it? And this was the extraordinary thing. The subject then gives a completely lucid, you know, grammatically correct um, explanation for why he could not touch his right elbow with his left forefinger. And... Um, mm -hmm. You know, the explanation, I can't remember what the explanation was, but that doesn't matter. Uh, the point is that it was obviously ridiculous. I mean, utterly ridiculous. Um, and, of course, the audience is rolling in the aisles at the ridiculousness of the explanation. And this is a bunch of people, you know, they're Cambridge undergraduates, highly intelligent people, and so is the guy mm -hmm. on stage, right? Um, and, you know, generally a high opinion of their own 
um, intellectual capability and of each other's intellectual capability. And the guy's just completely not realizing and not even caring about the fact that he has made such an idiot of himself. And, you know, as, as far as I was concerned, it's just like that. When people defend aging and say, you know, we shouldn't be trying to fix it, they are exhibiting that level of lack of reason, lack of rationality, despite the fact that they're perfectly rational about every other aspect of life.